ゲリビン、グリビニング、こんばんは。Uh, thank you very much for having me this、um, Buddhist Studies Center、um, summer session. And then thank you very much for Reverend Kevin, and then Jamie, and then、uh, Dexter, and then everyone who made this、um, occasion possible. And then all of you too. Thank you very much for coming out tonight. And then my name is Yuika Hasebe, and I am an associate minister of、um, Honpa Honganji Hawaii Betsin in Pali, Honolulu. So I truly appreciate、um, this opportunity to be with you this evening. So today's topic is what is the Jodo Shinshu to you? And then, this is, I think this is really a good question and good topic. And then, have you ever like,、uh, asked yourself, what is Jodo Shinshu to you? I actually never done it before. <laughs> and then, so I kind of enjoy thinking about it. So, I was born and raised in the Jodo Shinshu temple in the countryside of Japan. And then, so Jodo Shinshu teachings and the Nembutsu, Namo Ami Dabutsu, and the Buddhist Sangha have always been in my lifetime. It was always there. It was quite natural for me to put my hands together in Gasho and then recite Namo Ami Dabutsu. But even though I had been experiencing it, it didn't give its meaning much thought because since I was young, I saw everybody around me saying, saying, Namo Amidabutsu, Namo Amidabutsu, yeah? like、uh, my father, my grandpa, and grandma, and everybody in the village is Namo Ami, saying Namo Amidabutsu. Because my place, especially, is kind of famous for Jodo Shinshu. So everybody kind of saying Namo Amidabutsu. So it's kind of a natural thing for me to say Namo Amidabutsu. So as I recited Namo Amidabutsu when I was a child, But to be honest, I always thought, oh, I wish my grade go up. Please, Amida Buddha. Namo Amida Buddha. Or, oh, I hope my family will always be healthy and live for, well, at least 100 years old. So, Namo Amida Buddha. Onegai shimasu. So, you know, of course, I was a child. But do you know what happened as a result of my wishes? At least I'm happy to say that my grades went up a little bit because I studied a little. <laughs> so think about what is Jodo Shinshu to me. There will be many kinds of answers, and I'll be really happy to hear if you shared yours with me. And then, so I believe on the path of life, We encounter Jodo Shinshu in various different ways. Yesterday, we had a chance to hear, listen to Dr. Bloom and then Reverend Tennis and then Dexter's message, and they encounter, how they encounter Jodo Shinshu. And there w a s three different ways, yeah? So, not only them, some have a chance to meet Jodo Shinshu when a baby is born. Or, On the loss of someone really dear to you, or being seriously ill, or through your teacher or friends, or just simply just at the moment. One of my teachers mentioned he was able to encounter the teaching of Jodo Shinshu because of the war. So there are numerous ways to encounter Jodo Shinshu. So, each of us has our own kind of story how we encounter the teaching. So, if you ask me what is Jodo Shinshu to me, is I would say that Jodo Shinshu to me is the teaching which gives me strength to live and gives me strength to stand up again, even if I encounter difficulties. I have lived for over 30 years, and then I may be older than Jamie, but I, <laughs> I may, or maybe Takahashi is it too, but、uh, I may be like、uh, younger than quite most of you. 
<laughs> so, but I, I already have the sign that uh, I'm getting old. I often say, "Yokoi sho de sho," when I stand up, or even when I sit down, I say, "Yokoi sho," and then my back occasionally bothers me. I even sometimes forget to zip up my pants, and it wasn't like that before, you know. <laughs> so. But you know, other people sometimes said, "Ah, sensei, mada mada wa kai, you are still young, you're okay." So I'm kind of simple person, so the comments always reassure me, <laughs> and I'm really happy to hear about it. <laughs> so, but you know, those 30 plus years passed really fast, and I can't believe that I'm already in my mid 30s. First year I came, I was 20, 27, 28, but I'm already past the mid-30s. So when I reflect upon those years, I had many experiences, you know, like you. We, you know, all have a lots of different experiences. And some are good and some are bad. But I think those, I think there was, a, to me, was there was only one time that I thought, I totally didn't know what to do. That was the encountering of death, the death of my father. And I, I was sad, of course, and I didn't know that how to recover from the sadness or grief. Everybody plo every, everyday problems or conflicts are not that bad. Sometimes we can find answers when we change our way of thinking or when we can discuss the problem with other people and maybe can solve it together. Or we can just, if we can, we can just simply let it go. But most of the time it's hard. <laughs> like once it's getting really angry, I cannot really let it go though. So, but you know, if you can, just let it go. But death is not the kind of problem we can solve it in the usual way. So no matter how I change my way of thinking, my father will never come back and start living again. No matter how many times I talked with my, about my father with others and tried to find the answer, but pain and sadness came back every night and then it didn't simply go away. So death is something that we human beings can't solve in the usual way because it is beyond our limitation. So social problems or personal problems, we might be able to find the answers, but death is not like that to me. And I also was really amazed that many people of my home temple, Sangha, and also Sangha here in Hawaii had experienced the loss of their grandparents, parents, spouses, and then maybe friends, or sometimes their children. So this realization really made me tremble. They didn't really seem to show any sadness or tears in front of the other people. And everybody seems to be living happy life. But that was the first time I realized everybody goes through sadness and pain. They may not show it, but they may be crying inside. So all over the world, since human beings exist on this earth, the death and grief kept happening and never stop and will continue. So I wondered how people live with the sadness and pain. So we all know that death is inevitable for all human beings, and not only human, for all forms of life. No one can escape it from it. So when we look at our lives, none of us, even a baby, just born baby, will live for maybe, nowadays maybe 100 years, can ya? <laughs> but not like till like 150 years. You know, for people living right now, all of us here, not a single person will exist on this earth 150 years from now. 
Maybe Kono, this building maybe <laughs> live longer than us. <laughs> but human race may still exist, but the same people will not. Not a single person. There is no way that we can stop or change the situation. Sickness and aging as well will always be here. As Buddha mentioned, the question which arises on the path of human life are the ultimate problem for all of us. So to see reality is hard and painful, and to accept it is sometimes harder. And then I don't know how I will face my end of life and then my death, but there is no question that I will have to face it eventually. And then this is true for everybody. And I believe everybody or most of us wishes that their last day will be peaceful and filled with love. Of course I have my <laughs> wish, but I didn't say Namu Amida about that time. But, but of course I wish that you know, my last day will be really kind of peaceful. I wanted to be surrounded by many children. Eh? I don't even have a one. <laughs> but I wish to be surrounded by many children or grandchildren. No pain at all. Tell them how much I love them. And then they said how much they love me. And then I say Namu Amida Butsu in peaceful mind. And then only the hope to die as if we're just sleeping. But there's no guarantee. And then I think my wish sounds really difficult. Yeah? <laughs> but to me, you know, there's no guarantee. And then that is truth of human life. And, and one more thing is the other main teaching that I want to mention is a, like a Reverend Tennis mentioned yesterday night. The evil person is the true object of a Mira Buddha. I have never thought I was a bad person. No? Do you think you're a bad per person? But I never thought about it. And I didn't really think I was, you know, I didn't really think I was that good. But in regular way, you know, I'm not that bad either. <laughs> so I thought, well, I was good enough to say I'm good. So I never think about it. But when my father got sick, all of my family members took turns and take care of him, took care of him. We went to the hospital and they spent the night together. And then next morning, those people who stayed at the hospital went back home and the others came. So it's kind of taking time, yeah? Somebody always stayed there for my father. So it was okay in the beginning. But as days weeks, month went by, it got harder and harder, both you know, physically and mentally. But near the end of my father's life, even when he took the stronger and stronger pain medicine, the pain didn't go away. Yeah? It was you know, always kind of stayed. So he had a hard time sleeping. So I watched him all night helping him roll him, his body over, helping to wake him up and rubbing his back or joint, and helping him drink water or to go to the restroom. So I was exhausted and became really sleepy. And then one night, I did fall asleep, and I didn't wake up the whole night. And then my father was in pain, and he, I think he might, call, might have called my name, but I just couldn't wake up. To be honest, I truly was disappointed in myself. I thought I was a good daughter, and uh, you know, I was good. <laughs> but I know my father had been loving and caring father to me for over 20 years. I believe he, he changed my diapers millions of times and woke up when I cried when I was a baby. But when, needed, when he needed my care and help for the most, especially at the end of his life, 
I didn't do the same thing for him. I don't say I didn't try, but my first priority was me. I was sleeping. And I realized that my first priority was me, and it is. And then it will be always me. I realized I can never put others as my first priority. My kindness, gentles, honesty, and love are really limited. Some people said that because we are human beings, it can help. We do fall asleep, and we need to sleep. We need to eat, and we need to rest. That is true. And then we have to sleep, eat, and rest to continue our life. But at the same time, it shows our limitations. No matter how my loved ones is in pain, I need to rest, I need to sleep. No matter if the person can't eat, I need to eat to, to sustain my life. To me, it's, this is to me, that is ultimate limitation of human being. I am not talking about other people. Some people might be able to sacrifice even their life for others. But when I woke up and saw my father, I thought I saw my true self, true nature, who I am. And I remember one word now and then, the word which, was, which one of my senses shared with me. It is, when your true self is showed, even your parents runs away with bare feet. Which means when one's true self is showed, even his or her parents become scared and afraid of the evilness of the person and run for their lives. And I can't deny that. My nature is actually like that. So, is the life of human being just simply filled with sadness, fear, and loneliness? I don't think so. Living as human is difficult and hard, and it is not always happy, joyful, and smooth. Jodo Shinshu to me, is the teaching which step by step lead us to the reality. The reality of how human beings pass away. The reality of my limitations. The reality of what my true self is. The reality of sadness and pain. Embrace all of them for it encompasses everything and every aspect of human being, being human, being good, and being bad. We are never left in the dark alone. That is the teaching of Jodo Shinshu to me. That is why, even when I fall and tremble, teaching of Jodo Shinshu always gives me the strength to stand up again and live my life. That is what is Jodo Shinshu to me? So thank you very much for your kind attention. And then as conclusion, I would like to read the hymns of Shinna Shoni. Lacking even small love and small compassion, I cannot hope to be benefit sentient beings. Were it not for the ship of Amida's vow, how should I cross the ocean of painful existence? Namo Amida Butsu. Thank you very much.